One thing that repeatedly proved to be true in the business world is that the success of a venture is less dependent on the nature of the business. Rather, what determines the success or otherwise of any business to a large extent is the willingness to make things work against every visible obstacle. The story of Philip Morris fully represents this fact. As a business venture, the organization has every reason to fail. The odds were heavily stacked against the company right from the beginning. The number of factors that have the potential to mitigate against the growth of Philip Morris are better appreciated considering that the tobacco industry as a whole has almost zero credibility because of the huge risk its product poses to public health. Against all odds, the company has continued to make its mark in the business world despite the bitter controversy surrounding it. The company has stood the test of time and it has a long history that cuts across over 140 years. Philip Morris has expansive coverage on the world market, with its products reaching almost every end of the earth. This tobacco giant has traveled a very long road to its current destination. Stay tuned as we unveil every detail of its long walk to success. The story of the giant tobacco company all began with its eponymous founder, Philip Morris. Philip was a British tobacconist and cigarette importer. Although he had German origin, Philip Morris was born in 1835 in the small town of Whitechapel, England. He was the youngest of six children and grew up in a working class family. His father got into petty trading to support the family. In 1847, Philip Morris's family opened a tobacco shop on Bond Street in London where they sold loose tobacco and pre-rolled cigarettes. Morris had a keen entrepreneurial spirit from a young age and began working in his father's tobacco shop when he was just 12 years old. Philip Morris continued to learn about the cigarette trade in his early adult years. After completing his apprenticeship in his father's shop, Morris set his sights on America, the land of opportunity. In 1854, at the age of 19, Morris arrived in New York City with just $5 to his name. He quickly found work at a tobacco factory and began to learn the ins and outs of the industry. During his days in the tobacco factory, Morris broadened his horizons. He gathered the necessary knowledge on how to run a tobacco business on a bigger scale compared to his father's small shop back in England. Convinced that he had already had what it takes to run his own business, in 1858, Morris struck out on his own and founded his own tobacco company, which he named after himself. Initially, the company focused on producing hand-rolled cigarettes, which were popular at that time. However, Morris soon realized that there was a growing demand for machine-made cigarettes that were easier and faster to produce. To meet this demand, Morris invested heavily in new equipment and technology, and soon his company was producing millions of cigarettes every year. Morris also began to experiment with new blends of tobacco, creating a unique taste that set his products apart from the competition. In 1870, Morris began to produce Philip Morris Cambridge and Philip Morris Oxford Blues, which were later called Oxford Ovals and Philip Morris Blues. Philip Morris displayed a deep insight into the tobacco business by achieving a lot with his company within a relatively short period of time. However, the company still had a long road ahead. The Philip Morris Company had just started emerging as a big player in the tobacco industry when he died in 1873. Philip's death left a gap in the administration of the company, but his widow Margaret and his son Leopold Morris carried on his cigarette trade. Leopold soon proved to be a worthy successor as he took the company to a different level of dominance in the tobacco industry. Leopold's first innovation was forming a partnership with Joseph Grunenbaum in 1881, and in 1885 the company changed its name to Philip Morris & Company Ltd. after the partnership was dissolved. The company later went through a series of acquisitions from different owners before it was finally incorporated in 1919 as Philip Morris & Company Ltd. Inc. During the early 1900s, the company started rolling out different brands of cigarettes in order to expand into a different market. The company was very meticulous in its branding. It carefully created its product to appeal to the targeted market and aggressively directed the promotion of the brand to its targeted group of people. One of its most iconic brands is Marlboro, which was created in 1904. The Marlboro brand has been marginally successful since it first touched the market. Today, it is widely regarded as the most sold cigarette brand in the world. The company's Marlboro brand ranked first among the most valuable tobacco brands in 2017 on Brand Finance's website. 
In 1924, Philip Morris began a serious advertising campaign aimed at getting Marlboros into the hands of as many people as they could around the world. The company hired marketing experts to head the advertisement of the Marlboro brand across different media. One of the major advertising tricks the company pulled in promoting its Marlboro brand was to position the cigarettes as desirable by attaching them to trendy things in society. The company paid a huge sum of money to celebrities and TV stars to promote its brand. The company went as far as sponsoring event planners to organize parties for young people in different social gatherings like clubs and other functions. At the same time, they seized the chance to advertise their product. At some point, smoking the Marlboro brand was seen as being cool and progressive, while the company's advertising campaign carefully ignored the health hazard associated with smoking. In the first half of the 20th century, the company developed a living trademark to represent its brand, and it adopted the popular catchphrase, Call for Philip Morris, which was regularly displayed in live appearances and on the radio. Philip Morris sponsored a few radio shows, including It Pays to be Ignorant, The Kate Smith Hour, and This Is Your Life, which all began with the phrase, Johnny Presents, and Roventini's Call for Philip Morris. By the mid-20th century, the company shifted its marketing campaigns to television shows. From 1951 to 1955, Philip Morris sponsored the CBS sitcom I Love Lucy with Lucille Ball and Desi Arnaz pitching the product often and Philip Morris controlling the content of the program. In 1955, Philip Morris became an alternate sponsor with Procter & Gamble, eventually bowing out altogether by the end of that year. Most of the marketing campaigns that Philip Morris undertook were widely successful because of its clever methods of selling the products to a different set of people. At some point, the company began facing some challenges that threatened the whole tobacco industry. There is no doubt that Philip Morris achieved great success with its most popular brand, Marlboro. But the success comes with a huge price on the company's reputation. Over the years, the company has battled with a lot of heavy allegations and serious controversies around the world. This has resulted in a threat to the company's existence and severely challenged its operations. Government and international bodies like the WHO, or World Health Organization, have expressed concern about the risk of the company's product, tobacco, on public health. The WHO has been the most bitter critic of Philip Morris. One of the most serious allegations against the company was its alleged suppression of the harmful impacts of smoking. Former employees of the company claimed that Philip Morris distorted clinical trials and sponsored false research in order to disprove the harmful effect of smoking on public health. The company sponsored its internal research and instructed the researchers to alter the results to suit the market objective. This makes a lot of people continue smoking, which results in millions of deaths around the world every year. The company is also linked to the case of cigarette smuggling in the western part of Africa by its representative. Philip Morris has faced a range of regulatory restrictions, including marketing and advertising restrictions, increased taxation, and packaging regulations. These restrictions have made it more difficult for the company to market its products and have contributed to declining cigarette sales in many countries. Also, the tobacco industry is subject to various international trade restrictions, including tariffs and trade barriers. These restrictions have made it more difficult for Philip Morris to operate in certain countries, and it limits the company's ability to expand its market share. All these restrictions have caused the company to lose its market share in places like Hong Kong and Australia. With all the serious allegations and restrictions flying over the company, it became clear that Philip Morris was at the end of the road. But the company took another step to regain its stance in the world market. Philip Morris Inc. has made some important reforms to revive the dirty image of the company. One of the most significant developments the company has made in recent years is the introduction of smoke-free products such as electronic cigarettes and heated tobacco products. These products are seen as a potential alternative to traditional cigarettes, offering a reduced risk of harm to smokers while still providing nicotine. Due to the increased campaigns against smoking across the world, consumer preferences have shifted in recent years, with more people seeking smoke-free alternatives to traditional cigarettes. Philip Morris has responded to this trend by investing heavily in smoke-free products such as e-cigarettes and heated tobacco products. However, this shift has also contributed to declining cigarette sales and increased competition in the smoke-free market. To address concerns about its impact on public health and the environment, Philip Morris has implemented various corporate social responsibility initiatives. 
To make up for the low tolerance of the tobacco industry, Philip Morris has faced significant challenges related to reputation management, particularly in relation to its impact on public health. The company has worked to address these concerns by investing in public health research and supporting measures such as tobacco taxation and marketing restrictions. Philip Morris has also invested in research on how to reduce smoking. In September 2017, Philip Morris International announced the establishment of the Foundation for a Smoke-Free World, stating that it would support it with almost 1 billion U.S. dollars of funding over the next 12 years. According to the company, the objective of the foundation was to evaluate the impact that smoke-free alternatives can have on smokers and public health, assess the effect of reduced cigarette consumption on the industry value chain, and measure overall progress toward a smoke-free world. While not in a welcoming tone, the WHO has declared the attempt of Philip Morris to support a smoke-free world as a conflict of interest because the company is heavily invested in the smoking business. In spite of all these reforms carried out by Philip Morris, the company's reputation remains a significant challenge, particularly in the face of ongoing criticism from public health advocates and government officials. Philip Morris, to this day, continues to operate and adapt its business model amidst increasing regulatory pressure and declining cigarette sales, but its long-term survival as a tobacco company remains uncertain. It remains to see how Philip Morris will navigate the challenges posed by shifting consumer preferences towards reduced risk products and increased scrutiny on the health impacts of tobacco use. Regardless of the outcome, Philip Morris International is likely to remain a major player in the tobacco industry given its global presence and vast resources. This was the Philip Morris story. As Marlboro once stated, come where the flavor is and subscribe to Business Capital.